So guys, if you are looking for a debugger, then this GDB is the greatest debugger of all time. And I'm creating a full complete series on GDB, like from zero to 99. Okay, so keep watching. And this video contains three tips which will change the way you debug. Okay, and give me some time to prove that. So we have this simple code here. I have already compiled it. I'll start with the GDB. Let's say it is running. And if I say break at main, so this is loaded. Now if I say break at main, we have first breakpoint. We can see that it's going to get break when it will hit main. I know you, you know all these things. Let me prepare the stuff and then we'll start. So this is your first breakpoint. Let's say I want to put breakpoint at line number eight and breakpoint at line number nine. So see, we have second breakpoint, third breakpoint. So if I want to know like how many breakpoints I have, so like I have three breakpoints, right? One, two, and three. Let me make this terminal a little big. So we'll be good to see that. So one, two, three. Now assume for some reason your application is crashed or some hap something happened and you don't have this GDB session on meaning your all the breakpoints are gone. But before that, you can do one thing. You can save your all the breakpoints. I'll show you how. So we have three breakpoints. We can see that if I will say save breakpoint, see, and I can give any file name. So I should say maybe GDB file or GDB breakpoints. And then if I'll hit enter, it's saved at GDB breakpoint. Now let me just kill this. I'll say quit. And we are out. Let me go back again and see if I will do info B, there are no breakpoints. Let me restore all those breakpoints to restore command is source. And then if you give, what was that GDB underscore breakpoint. And now if I hit enter, see it restored. I mean, it took all the breakpoints from that file and it applied for you. It is really very handy when you are working on a bigger project and trying to debug something which is not trivial. You have to put so many breakpoints here and there. You have like 10, 15 breakpoints and you don't want to put them again. Then this is the go. Cool, right? Yeah. So this was the first one. Don't go anywhere. We have second and third also. And the second one is P type, meaning you can get the type of the object. What I mean is, see, when you work on a very big project, sometimes what happens, okay, you have some pointer and you feel like, okay, where is the class of this pointer? I just want to see like how the class look like. And for that, you have to go to code and see where is that class. And then you will go there. If you want to save that time, you can do one thing. Let me run this first. So we are running this now. And now it is at line number 13. Let me show you this. Yeah. So this is at this. Okay. Now let me just say next so that P is now instantiated and it is initialized. Now if I say P type P, notice this, it will show me the class. See, this is really very cool. See, it is showing me the class point and private X, integer Y and all those functions. See, you don't have to go to the code and see the class. You can do that right away in the debugger itself. So remember this first one was saving the breakpoints, which was save space breakpoint and file name. And you have to source that breakpoint when you restart the session. And this second point is P type, meaning print the type of this object. Don't think like that. This is just a simple class. That's why it is printing. No, it can print any class. You can't imagine that. Okay. And it works with the pointers also. Okay. So you can try that. So if we have P type address, sorry, asterisk address P that should work. See, it is still giving me the class. So let's say if P was a address, I mean, if it was a pointer, then you just have to dereference that and then it will give you the pointer. I mean the class. Let me check this. I mean the address. See with the address also it is giving. So there is no point in dereferencing and all that. You can directly get it with the pointer. I mean the address also. So this was the second one. Third one is also a time saving stuff. Let me show you that. So where are we? We are at 40 number line, right? If I say print P, it is printing X. I mean, it is showing what is the value of that object, meaning what does this P contains? It contains X and its value is one and Y and then that's value is two. Now, 
notice this dollar one sign i can reuse this dollar one sign i can say p dollar one see if i do that it is creating another variable and these things are just like a variable they point to whatever you want them to point at if i would say p let's say dollar one dot x if i will hit enter see now three is pointing at one because dollar one is actually pointing to p and p's x is one if i would say y then it is two now if i will say print dollar four then that is going to print two obviously see so now see whatever expressions you get it gets assigned to different variables and you can use these variables and the variables are not limited to this only there is a whole video coming for that so i'll sum up this video guys thanks for watching and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and if you're new to the channel subscribe it because you don't want to miss right so yeah thanks for watching guys bye bye